All right, well, let's get this thing going. This is your panel, your brainchild, your idea. Tell us all, why are we here? What, what are we even doing? Uh, we are here because we're trying, we're going to talk about our processes and procedures of how we go about each of our individual arts, that we, mediums that we do. How do I art? How do you art? Oh. Oh, no. You just like draw, right? It just how do, happens. How do, you how do you make jewelry and how do you paint? Jewelry? I'm a man. I don't wear that. <laughs> well, there you go. All right, so let's start off from way down there hey. between two tears. Who are you? Um, Tell everyone who you are. Let well, the world know. Uh, my name is Will, but um, online I go by Trigian. I make um, oil on canvas paintings. No, no, we're not on that question yet. What? Just we're who not are you? Yet. Just who am I? Yeah. I'm just a guy that, that lives at home and paints in his free time. And likes ponies. You can't forget and, that. I watch ponies occasionally, and as well as just about anything else that Foss has made. But uh, um, I work in, uh, the, uh, in outdoor education and in uh, conservation work, building trails, teaching kids um, in the outdoors. And I absolutely love how, like, just being outside and just how bright and how huge the landscapes are. And, Painting plays into that pretty well, but that's moving into the next question, right? <laughs> no, now we got to introduce the next one. Next one. Go in order. <laughs> Can I have that flow? Well, my name is Jason. I go by Chaotic Brony online. I am the one who makes the pony jewelry um, that I'm, apparently some of you don't wear. Um, <laughs> that's nice to know. Uh, pretty much during the day, I make jewelry for my father at his jewelry store, and at night, I make jewelry for the Bronies. I am aware of My Little Pony, um, it's all right. <laughs> no, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I am Toxic Mario, I go by Jared in real life, obviously. Um, I obviously am a fan of the show. I do comics for the fandom. I also do single pictures, but I don't obviously don't do the real like comic comics. I do fandom comics. Um, that's just about it for me. And I work at a gas station, so there you go. <laughs> that is terrible, I know that for a fact. It's terrible. All right, so now we'll go way down there again. Now, hey, what do you do? I paint oil and canvas paintings, uh, primarily, and uh, I've been doing it since I was in eighth grade, uh, just in my free time. Uh, I usually go off of pictures that I've taken, or um, in this case, uh, picture, uh, screenshots from the show. Um, and uh, yeah, I make prints of them and sell them to uh, people at conventions like this. Um, yeah. Anything? Yeah. yeah. Well, I pretty much take sheets of metal and coils of wire and bend them to my will. <laughs> Occasionally, if I'm feeling generous, I'll add a gemstone or two. And I, like I said, do comics. Uh, my method is to do them, sketch them on paper, just the ponies, and then I scan them and then I work, rework them in Photoshop, doing all the backgrounds and stuff on my own, which is a lot of work. So do you all guys all have a table at the vendor's hall? Yes. We yes. All, all right. So table 604. Now you, now you gotta tell us exactly where it is so we can go buy the stuff and throw money at you. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm at 420. I'm on a corner booth right next, right around where Andrew plays. 420 plays it. <laughs> buy the bathrooms. I'm gonna get in trouble for that. 604. 502. 604. Write I mean, that down. You gotta see all the all the tables down there at some point. So just walk through and see everything, and you'll see. Oh all yeah, it's stuff. super crowded down there. Like, be glad you're here right now. Yeah. It's not. Oh, uh oh, here comes Av. What do we do wrong? Oh come on, you. you be oh wow. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. That is how we panel. All right. That's better. Ooh, I like that. I'm loud. <laughs> all right. All right. So. Going a little away from just the art aspect, we gotta ask the generic questions. How did you get into this fandom and best pwn? Uh, okay, uh, you wanna start? All right, all right. Start so how, this how did I get right. into this fandom? Um, I heard that Lauren Foss was making a new My, uh, My Little Pony series about a year before it came out. And at first I thought, oh no, She's like grabbed by the corporate machine and they're gonna grind her in the dust. And then I thought, oh, maybe she'll do something awesome with it. And so I had this in the back of my head. Unfortunately, it wasn't about until the summer after season one ended that I thought to go back and revisit it. 
Um, and I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. It was already getting all over the internet and I was starting to see it like crop up on different image boards and whatnot. And so I uh, gave it a shot, watched it, um, first cringing at the opening and like getting through the first few episodes. But by episode three, I was, I was pretty hooked. Um, and I was like, yes, Lauren Foss has once again pulled it off something amazing. So. Well, um, I knew about the Brony Phantom and My Little Pony since, I think, July of 2011 is when I first really heard about it. I kind of looked into it. I just went, <laughs> no. Um, about a year later, uh, the uh, controversy with uh, Derby talking came up, and I found myself actually pretty intrigued by it, even though I claimed before that I did not care about the show. <laughs> that was a strong Okay. Bad. And anyway... Um, uh, that got that 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 went from watching the clip about Derpy talking, the big controversial clip, to other clips from the show, to me going, "Don't I have the hub on my cable? I think I do." And I was like, "Oh yeah, man, that's premium oh, I cable." Do. So anyway, um, I said, "Okay, well, I'll record the next episode that airs." Humor myself. It was less than zero. Um, I don't think I need to say any more after that. <laughs> You're, I like to call you a late bloomer in the fandom. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see, I got into the fandom in May 2011, but if you guys know Citra360, I'm, very, I'm pretty good friends with him. He was pressuring me that April in 2011 to, like, to, he was like playing the MLP clips and I was rejecting not watching it. And then I got into it around May, and I, again, I started off in the beginning from season one. And like I said, by episode three, I was hooked on it, and I blasted through season one in under 48 hours. So that and taking all that into account with sleeping and stuff like that, I that was a marathon, and I don't know, it's been in it, in it ever since. It's, it's been a blast. Nice. So who is the best pony? P uh, Applejack. P Pinky. Rarity. Oh wow, variety. Finally, nice. the right answer. You get a hug. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> right okay. answer. Well, They're in shame. denial. It's definitely Applejack. <laughs> also, um, Luna is best princess, Derpy is best background pony, and they're all voiced by the Vest VA. Oh, right. That is true. I wish he was here. <laughs> Sweetie Belle. Sweetie Belle. Oh, all the way. <laughs> so how exactly did you all get into your style of art, whether it's the oil painting or the jewelry or the comics? Like, how did you really get into that niche of art? Uh, okay, I'll start that no, one. No, we start that way. Oh my gosh, why not? Stop it. Oh my gosh. I'm going first. You can't okay, take fine. it. Okay, fine. All right, first. I'm a terrible sketch artist. Uh, geometric precision and clean, crisp lines, which is what pencils are really good at, is something I'm terrible at. But if it's something that involves getting myself really messy, getting paint all over myself, and um, uh, pushing stuff around on canvas or pushing stuff around on a uh, canvas board, uh, glass, wood, I think that's like the best thing ever. And so I really like forming uh, the light and landscape, the shape of things um, uh, in its entirety. And so like oil paint works for me like that just because it's, um, it stays wet for a very long period of time. It gives me a lot of time to sculpt it and work on it. Um, and it, I mean, yeah, it's all about like, just like the texture of it as well. Um, and helps me work in, with art in a way that I certainly have never been able to work with like pencils and stuff like that too. Um, I've been sawing out metal and playing with fire since I was 12, uh, courtesy of my father who taught me the basics. And then over the course of the last 13 years, I've kind of taught myself the rest. And then I've been making pieces um, good enough to sell for probably about the last eight years of my life. And then about uh, six months into being a brony, I was thinking long and hard on it. What could I do for the fandom? I wanted to do something for the fandom. I wanted to contribute. And I just couldn't put my um, finger on it until all of a sudden I remembered, hey, wait a minute, I make jewelry. That's I'll give that a shot. <laughs> um, let's see, for me, for drawing, I, I really never really got into drawing too much uh, when I was younger. It just more popped in and when I was my senior year in college in 2010. But I can't really sketch well just going straight on a laptop, like a tablet, and just like going, hey, here's what I'm going to draw. I have to start on paper because I don't have a steady enough hand to really just do it uh, free will like that on just a computer. I could do it probably now, but I'm just too lazy. Um, but as far as getting to the comics, I actually started out doing single pictures 
and I worked my way into com comics because I wanted to tell my own story, but still keep it kind of canony and stuff like that. But that's, I don't know, I, I decided to just do comics because I, just, I feel like I can, I can tell a story the way I want to see it in my head and stuff like that, and tell jokes. So how do you each do it? Like beyond the basics of pick up pencil, draw, pick up paint, paint. How do you really do like, what do you use for inspiration? How do you get in that groove where you're just going at it and loving what you're doing? Well, the first thing that really helps is uh, live streaming for me because having someone watching helps me keep from getting distracted. But um, I usually have a prompt uh, that I paint from. Uh, my favorite way to do that is to bring up a prompt onto my tablet and then I can actually use my tablet as a, um, as a palette. So I mix the paint on my uh, prompt uh, and helps me get the colors right and go from there onto the canvas. Obviously I can't do that every time because sometimes I'm too lazy to clean the, pal the, the palette afterwards. But um, using like an image, a prompt, whatever, just go from that and then uh, go onto the, uh, to the canvas one layer at a time. Okay. Um, usually what gets, usually what kind of gets me um, inspired is um, you know, I watch I watch the episodes. I look for subtle little thi subtle little works of art in the show, from their cutie marks to, um, you know, maybe the uh, scroll work on the window in Twilight's library. You know, anything can inspire me from the show. Uh, sometimes I'll just sit at my computer listening to um, uh, pony themed music while sketching sketching it out. And sometimes I don't even do anything pony related. Sometimes I'll be listening to I don't know Disney music or just um, my favorite band, and I just sit sketch and usually I find myself getting inspired. Wow, I just sit in a dark room all day. No, I just, <laughs> I, no, all I do is, uh, let's see, for me, it, it depends because I like to keep my stuff obviously somewhat canon-like, but what I like to, what, what I try to find is that there's, okay, that's a lot, um, if there's certain, uh, like little tiny things on the show, like, like I pick up on like, either things that the pony, the characters say, like, or I could just like do some really wacky joke with, uh, with Spitfire, her hair is like, what does it look like? It looks like fire. So okay, I can make a joke using like Derpy because it would be something like Derpy would do. It's just random things that I just go pop through my head and just converge ideas. And if there is something that happens to do with an episode that I'm like, oh hey, they said this. I could do a comic on whatever. That's kind of how I go about mine. But it's usually just sitting, pondering for hours, just thinking of an idea. Because comics are just a little bit more, a little bit more thinking that you gotta do. Because like I said, you gotta tell a story. So out of all, you guys combined have done so much work already, and you also yeah, obviously have years and years of art to go. As of now, what do you consider your masterpiece, or at least your best work yet? Oh, man. Well, um, I think the best pony-related work I've done was the first one I did, which is the uh, painting I did of Ponyville from the intro shot. Uh, a little bit depressing that I haven't really uh, moved on from there as far as which one is my best overall composition, but. Um, I've really been using uh, this opportunity to uh, find new techniques and learn new things. And though I've broad broadened my skill set, I uh, still think that's my uh, my best work there. Yeah. Uh, best pony related work. <laughs> yep. Okay. Probably uh, my one of my latest pendants, Princess Twilight, um, oh. where, where where has the uh, galaxy quartz stone behind with her wings expanding over it, and made entirely out of silver, and it's got a little diamond and a star shaped crest. Um, sold at the Everfree charity auction for twenty one hundred dollars. Oh wow! I don't got that kind of money. Yeah, and definitely my masterpiece. <laughs> it was one something that was I had in my head since Twilight became an alicorn, and um, I just had it in my head for months, just perfecting it until I finally made it. And I figured, okay, which I figured, okay, what do I do with this? You showed and me. I, I actually, charity. Yeah, uh, you showed me that, and I think I always said something about it, and you said it was fine, it was perfect. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Best work. Uh, oh boy, I'm trying to think. There, I've done so many comics. Where, so. Luna? No, that's actually that's, a, that's an awesome idea that I did. Um, as far as a, it has to be a comic that I did, but uh, I'm, I've done so many that it's really hard to choose which one. I, I mean, there was one that I have a close to my heart one that I did, which is one where Luna is. It's a Philly comic where I have a Philly Luna and Philly Celeste. She's too young to be able to raise the moon on her own. She just cries, and then Celeste raises the moon for Luna, and she's and then. They basically go out on the porch, the, the patio, and then Luna thinks that she did it, and it really Celestia like did it, uh, raised it, and there you all have a cute little hug scene at the end. But uh, 
that's probably my best work. Again, I have so many comics I can't even choose from. I've, I've done like over 120 comics. It's, it's nuts. So what so far is your best seller, either here at Con or previous cons you've been to? Um, when I finished, a, um, I did a painting based off, uh, inspired from the um, music video by So Great and Powerful, the standard model. Um, he did a video t uh, from the um, episode where they all get their cutie marks. And so each, um, it's a, it was a six panel series of paintings. Um, and each one of them had, showed the moment that they got the cutie mark with the rain boom in the middle spilling out over all the panels. And so that one actually got enough attention for me that um, I had two people commission me to paint it again for them, oh, wow. and I've been selling it at every convention I've gone to and had to restock a couple times. And uh, so that's been wildly successful for me. I even met uh, uh, So Great and Powerful uh, at Canlock Gardens, and that was awesome. And I tried to give him a free copy, and he, he refused and then bought five copies of it. Oh, wow. I was wow. like, he's an awesome guy. Like, So Great and Powerful is great. And powerful. <laughs> well, I've only been vending for a year now, but I'd probably say that my number one seller would be my, uh, well, would be two of them, my lead and wing pony badges. Oh, um, yeah, I've seen those. Life yeah. They're the life size replicas, I'm assuming. Um, they usually saw it within the first hour. Um, I've only been in the vending hall for about 30 minutes before I had to come to this panel, <laughs> and I have one. Lead pony badge left and three <laughs> wing left already. You should have wow. made more. <laughs> um, let's They're see. not that easy to make. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see. Best thing that I sell. Uh, it depends on what you're wanting to sell because I do so much variety of different things. Uh, as far as this overall, there's I think it's my derpy dash hugging print that came from my last panel on a comic that I did last August. Everybody seems to love that print, and I love that panel too because I've been making it into like a mouse pad and everything else that goes with it. It's even a Wheel of Fine shirt. Um, but I think it's basically that one, my Werewolf Luna, my Were Luna concept, that's b done big. And then you have, I think, one more that I cannot, oh, my one more Derpy, uh, my DBZ Fluttershy. That's my other one that's doing really well. I think that that's a good one. That's a good one. So what would you tell anyone who's trying to get into art, specifically like fandom art? Because we all have to agree, art is hard. You have to be dedicated. It takes a practice. What's the best inspirational message you can give to anyone who's just starting out? Oh, okay. For me, it's, um, for, the key for me was to find the right medium. Um, as I said, uh, pen, uh, pencils kind of frustrate me. But um, as soon as I had a teacher that broke out some oils for me to work with and some pastels for me to work with, it really clicked and uh, it gave me the inspiration to want to put the time into, um, which is the time is what you really need to get good. It's just like doing it over and over and over again. Um, but you're not going to do that unless you're having fun. So mm. if, you're, if you're not having fun, try a different medium. Go buy, buy some paints, go buy a different set of pencils and try it out. And if you're having fun, the rest will follow from there. Um, learn what you're best at, and you know, try to you know try to focus on that. Um, and even if you're not that great at it, you know, it, all you, all it need, all you need to have is tenacity. You just need to just just keep going forward. Don't give up. Um, I, in all honesty, it got frustrating for me within the first few months. I almost gave up on about two or three different occasions. Just said, ah, this isn't going anywhere. But I kept going forward, um, persistence, and um, I'm very happy with um, what I've done so far. If you're gonna go into any type of art like I do with sketching and putting stuff digitally, I would highly recommend you guys start on paper. And if you guys are just basically just flat out starting out like raw, um, I would take references from the show, take a screenshot, and see if you can replicate just the pony. Don't work on the background, just see if you can just first work on getting the characters. That's how I originally started out with MOP, was like I was looking at the show, referencing poses and stuff like that early on for the first couple, couple months or so. Um, but just, if you're gonna go into that, I would say start on paper, and if, but if you feel confident enough, to go right to digital, by all means. But it, it just try, like I said, it's just trying to find your medium. Like, just try different things, and just like, just like uh, Jason uh, Kay, like said here, just be really persistent in what you're doing. You're gonna have a lot of failures. Like, I remember when I started out, and where I look from where my old stuff is to where my new stuff is. Sure, I hate it, but I don't mind looking at it because it's like, okay, here's where I came from. 
but and it comes with time. You're gonna you're, you'll see the pro the improvement slowly but surely, and like I said, it's just a matter of being persistent on it. I mean, everybody has talent. It's just that it's just your desire and your will to actually just go and do it. That's what you have to do. Definitely, but I know we're at BronyCon, but outside of pony art, what else do you guys do in the art scene? Oh. Well, um, I made this t-shirt. Ooh. That's one thing. Cool. Uh, stand up. Show everybody. All right. <laughs> Ooh, that is nice. Very nice. Ooh. Hey, I guess I can, I can get so, now take it off. <laughs> <laughs> no. You got to pay me more first. Uh, the, uh, but this is for my uh, archaeology field school that I went to. Uh, me and one other person designed this uh, after we finished the program. And um, it was just like a cool reminder, like, hey, we, we did this, we finished it. So it's a, so it's a person working a, uh, uh, an e-prism and a stadia pole on the back, which are the real tools of archaeology. Don't believe in Indiana Jones and the whip and, and uh, pickaxe stuff, because you got to go down one centimeter at a time. Um, but yeah, so I like to do art at all sorts of different mediums. Um, painting is what I think I'm most successful at. I can actually produce something that someone might want to buy. Um, but like, I love doing sketches. I love doing um, photography, uh, anything that I can do. Well, um, I guess uh, outside of make, uh, making pony jewelry, I make other types of jewelry. Um, I'm pretty much obsessed with it. I, you know, people say I'm obsessed with My Little Pony. It's not true. I'm obsessed with jewelry. But that's just that's nothing new. I've been that way since I was three, because I've been around it my whole life. Um, but pretty much when I'm not making pony jewelry out of silver and uh, base metals like copper and brass, I'm making high quality stuff with gold and diamonds. Um, my, my masterpiece, um, gold and diamonds being a diamond encrusted brooch, I made for a customer. I had a set of about 180 small little gemstones all over it. Oh, wow. It had a retail value of about 30000 I think. Um, <laughs> I'm in the wrong job. Yeah, pretty much. That's well. So, so am I. I don't get the money. My father does. It's his store. I'm salaried. <laughs> Work so, for me. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much what I do. But I guess if um, I guess if you want to call art uh, comedy an art, I, yeah, I love. You know, I make I make comics. I don't know if anyone, anyone who sees my Demon Art Gallery every now and then I post up a comic I do. Not the best digital art, but I, I love the art of comedy. I like trying to make people laugh. It's a lot of fun. You did that Transformers pendant though a long time ago though. That was an engagement ring. Oh well, you did that one. I, that, that's still one other medium, that, you, that other type of thing outside pony. But it's still jewelry. <laughs> I know, but it, it was outside <laughs> the pony thing. Yeah, it has her. There you me. go. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, for me, uh, whew, I used to do dragon art. That's how I did before I got into ponies. Uh, I I could probably do it now. I really wish I got back into it, but that was just a fad that I was in. Um, that was basically the last thing I did, and now I'm starting to get into Bravest Warrior stuff. Oh. I'm starting to do a lot of Catbug. I absolutely love Catbug stuff. So I'm trying to work on drawing him a lot, and outside of that, I don't really do much. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to branch out, but I just, I'm just different, trying different things on the computer. I'm, just I'm, keep drawing Catbug. I love well, you're pretty good at the um, art of uh, meteorology. Well, that uh, I guess this yeah. guy can the art of anything. the art of storm chasing. I yeah, actually, I, yeah, uh, I am gonna go storm chasing again next year. That's that's one, that's one thing I gotta do. A random stay in the middle of the summer. Mario called me once and said, "Dude, you need to get your cars under cover. There's gonna be hail." And I'm like, "It's sunny outside." I'm like, what are you, "Why are you calling me?" <laughs> actually, thirty yeah, minutes later, that. there was quarter inch hail on not not like my city, like my neighborhood, and well. <laughs> Like he can either controls well, the weather or is he... I can for, well, that's what I, was, I was the best forecaster <laughs> in my class. Actually, the, the big uh, tornado that they had in Oklahoma, all that whole string of days, I actually forecasted that. And if any one of you guys... There, there's a guy that I know very well, you guys know him, is uh, Fezzo Fairbex. He does a customs. And I forecasted those storms perfectly, and his cousin's house got hammered by one of the tornadoes. Oh. And I told him and his uh, family to get into the Oklahoma University campus, and... He got lucky. I was like, whoa, how was that cool? I actually did something productive with my major, <laughs> finally. <laughs> and the, so, one, yeah, sort of. the one last one I have for you guys before we open up to audience Q&A is, what are your thoughts on art school? Did you go, do you think it's necessary, or do you think you can just do it with sheer will and practice? Well, um, I feel like a really important part of art is uh, the, uh, the 
first the hurdle of getting over like learning whatever medium you're in and then the time and repetition and art school is going to be really really helpful in providing both of those things um, with the uh, if you don't do it you're going to fail as an incentive but the other side of it is it will give you mentors and other students that also um, share the same passions and desires so I feel like especially if you're going into it as a career art school is a great idea um, it's not something that everybody needs to do but it's a really good idea um, I think it really depends on what form of art you want to go into and really also how much of a passion you have for and how much of a gift you have for some people are born with a natural gift to do what they can do um, I like I mentioned I never went to any schools to learn how to make jewelry my father taught me the basics and I taught myself the rest but um, he, my father on the other hand taught himself everything and oh, wow. he's twice the jeweler I am I probably never gonna be as good as him <laughs> and uh, because every time I get better he gets better so um, and but, you know, like I said but he just had a, he just he was just born with a natural gift to make jewelry um, so really I think it, art school might be necessary I mean if you're into something but you just can't seem to just get it art school might help but if you can pick up a chisel and um, chisel away some marble and create a masterpiece on your own and I don't, I don't think so I didn't go to art school <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do it um it, like I said it depends on where you want to go with it I would say art school is good it's it's not you don't have to do it I mean all the stuff that I did I just did straight up all on my own just trying to go learn the basics and just work my way up it's taken obviously almost three years to get where I am now but it's it's just it, art school is good. It's just I don't really. I know some people who are in it. Some people say, "Oh man, it was like the roughest whatever years of my life." I mean, it taught me a lot. But sometimes they say, "Oh, it wasn't recommended for what?" I, but that also it's, it depends on what medium you're going into. Some people say it's worth it. Some others say it wasn't worth it. Even though I got a few things out of it, it just was chaos. But for me, um, I could go. I could go to art school, but I would rather just keep learning on my own. I mean, it's it's a slower process. I don't have mentors or anything else like that. But I don't know, I'm just gonna, I, I mean, it, you, know, it's not, you don't have to do it, like they said, but, I don't know. It's, it's you, I say go for it if you want. Yeah, definitely. Now we're gonna open up some audience Q&A. Yay. You were first, hold on. Oh. Oh, oh we got oh, the wireless mic on here. Oh my god. Nice, that's effective. Ooh, my bad. Right there, yeah. <laughs> nope, you turn it off. There we go. Yay. All right. All right. I got a couple questions, if that's okay. That's fine. Okay. Um, you there, the oil painter. Uh -huh. um, when you, um, when you, <laughs> before you actually start painting on a canvas, uh -huh. you, you were saying, you know, you don't really do like a lot of sketches, but do you actually like sketch like an idea, like if you're drawing a pony or something, you draw oh, yeah. that. How do you actually transfer that image onto a canvas? I've tried numerous things but nothing seems to work. What do you do? Well, um, at this point, yes, I do lots of, my sketches don't look great, but I definitely use them. Uh, I make a lot of sketches to figure out how it's gonna look on the, um, before it gets to the canvas. Uh, but now I just do the sketch and then do it on the canvas. But when I first started out, what I did was I gridded off the canvas uh, into a grid and then I gridded off my sketch or gridded off my image. And then instead of drawing the whole thing, I draw each little piece in each little grid mark um, exactly how it is and transfer it that way. Okay. And cool. so, I mean, as, as That's you go. That's a lot easier than what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it helps a lot, you. especially starting out. And just um, one more question. Um, do you, after you finish painting with the oils, like after you finish a whole piece, do you um, like put anything on it to like, you know, what's, yeah, protect it? Um, I don't. Or do you not? The, um, I mean, the paint itself will last for however as uh, long as you need but uh, if you want it to be especially glossy or if you want any other um, if you want it to sparkle or anything like that there's all sorts of, um, of finishes that you can put on there uh, that uh, anything from just ligand if you just apply ligand to it it'll make it a little bit shinier okay. it'll also make it dry a bit quicker uh, but um, I like the matte look of just the straight oil yeah okay thank you yeah. <laughs> all right I saw someone in the back earlier and they're oh. gone. All right, who will? Oh, there. <laughs> Another one? Yeah, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what's good, my man? Uh, this is also an oil painting question. Um, sorry. Do you, uh, 
prepare the canvas or uh, artboard with anything? Do you like to use gesso, a layer for like wet on wet method? Um, I usually use a layer of just white or black. Um, on an especially large canvas, I'll use house paint. Um, it's lower quality, but it definitely saves me a lot in the long run, so I don't have to use my like artist quality um, oil paint. Um, but yeah, just oil-based uh, house paint uh, painted on it. Um, I leave the texture, but if you want it to be really smooth after it dries, you can go with a piece of sandpaper and it'll take out all the texture so you left with a smooth um, uh, base to work with. Uh, but yeah, uh, prime it just like you prime the walls before you paint them. Uh, you don't need to use primer though. You just need any paint. All right, who else? We've got a question? Yep. Right here. All right. I was just uh, curious. Do you guys always draw in the uh, you know the art style of the show, or do you ever you know branch out into other things? You know, some people draw in a more like animeish style, and uh, they have their own unique styles. Oh, no, for me, oh, I'll start that one. Um, for me, I stick to the show. I have, I, I would love to branch out in different styles. I mean, if I did do the DBZ Pony ones, which I'm doing, they're in show style, but they're, 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 the line art and everything else in it is pure DBZ style. I made sure I did the rocks the same texture, the auras, the line art that's on it. It's all in that medium. Um, I had done one anime type thing, which was uh, one, an old comic that I did, which is, animating on one panel, I guess you could say that. Um, but I like to stick to the show style and almost all my comics and all the art that I do. Like this one is one of my art pieces that I did. It's a Wheel of Fine shirt. So like this one was one that I did. I like sticking to show style stuff. So that's just where my, that's where my heart is in it. Um, usually I try to stick to the, you know, again, the show style. When I'm making the cutie mark pendants, I try to make them as accurate as possible. I mean, I, when, I'm, when I'm putting the butterflies on the uh, Fluttershy cutie mark pendant, I try to make sure they are as close to the position of her actual butterflies. Um, when I'm doing the lead pony badge, lead oh. pony badge, I try to make them as close to the, you know, show like size and everything as possible, even with the alicorn amulet. Um, but every now and then I branch out and you just do a freeform design. Um, it's just the Twilight one there you do. Yeah, like the Princess Twilight one, yeah. Cool. But I think I normally stick to the show style for the most part because I love reverse engineering. I love s seeing the art in my head and then just taking it, in my mind, just taking it apart and determining how many pieces I need, how, I'm, how I need to put the pieces together, how, you know. It's a lot of fun. Reverse engineering is kind of my specialty when it comes to the j designing jewelry. I like keeping the uh, bright colors, and a lot of times my prompts will be straight from screenshots of the show, and I'll try to put in all the details exactly where they are, where they should be, um, if, especially if I'm doing a background or whatever. But I like to add a lot of realism, uh, both to how the joints work on the ponies and uh, also to um, how the atmospheric effects work on the backgrounds and the colors that would be... Uh, I mean, I keep them really vibrant, but... I might add uh, a bit of a haze as something goes back, or uh, just a touch of realism to make it work with the um, medium a bit more. Well, it's, yeah, it's just tricky because it's like for all of us. I mean, like for my uh, like for my stuff, it's just I I usually don't follow the backgrounds to a T. I usually get an idea for what the backgrounds are, but as far as it's just like, two different styles that you have to play with too, that makes it really hard. Because I know. For your like for your backgrounds, you kind of follow the layout of the background shows. Like in the uh, standard model ones, you follow the backgrounds on those paintings, but you also threw your own flair into them a little bit with the Sonic Rainbow thing. Mm -hmm. But you know, like that, I don't know, it's just a different styles that we both all work with. But the other show. All right, who's who's next? Right back there. Questions? Yay! Making me walk all the way over here. <laughs> what? I've been too much walking. I'm gonna sit down for this one. <laughs> I'm gonna stand up. Oh, oh boy! I can't take it. Okay. For the jeweler, how do you like begin to start doing like jewelry? Where do you? Where can you go to start? Like, what can you do? Um, School. Um, some colleges offer offer silversmithing classes for beginners. Um, that's usually a good start. Uh, you can try to get a job at a jewelry store. Um, when I started working for my father 15 years ago, I wasn't even making jewelry. I was actually a taking out the trash, wiping down the counters. Um, granted, I was only um, like 12 at the time, but uh, I, was, I was around it and I was familiarizing myself with it. And then when I um, started to get comfortable around it, um, I started learning the basics. Um, 
but usually the best method is to uh, go to school, try to see if you can find a college course or um, you know any kind of public course that will teach you the basics or read some books. There's some good books on jewelry design. I'm guessing you have to work with different types, but you have to probably go to school for learning how to do different types of metals and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, who else got one? All right, back to the front. Back to the front. <laughs> oh, this walking. These are not good shoes for this. <laughs> um, when you do the comic books, you said you use Photoshop. Oh, uh, I don't. Well, yeah, the comics. Yeah, I use. Uh, I put them on paper and then I scan them scan. and then I work in Photoshop. Yeah. Yes. So, like, when you scan them, is it just like just like a sketch, like a line art? Oh yeah, yeah. The- what I do is. Um, it depends on what I'm working on. If I go for the comic, I have it obviously. I, the way I work it is, I think of the idea and I write it down on paper of just like how I want the comic to be laid out, like panel, like the idea, and then the panel one, two, three, four, and then I'll write down the scenes I want, and I'll put the angles that I want the comics on. Then what I'll do is, if there's an angle that I've never drawn before in the show, but the show has it, for example, like the walk cycles, I usually like taking a reference to a walk even though I draw the rest of the pony, just the, the, how that walk goes, I like to freeze frame it and, wa- and draw it like that. And then what I'll do is, once they're all sketched out, I scan them in, and obviously I'll crop it a little bit so it's easier <laughs> instead of working for the huge paper size file. Um, but it, it depends, because, I mean, for the way I sketch it, I sketch them so tiny, I, I'm not kidding. It's my sketches are the size of that bottle cap. How they are that, that small. <laughs> I, I don't know, I just can't draw big, I used to draw big, but I never, I just can't, it's just a habit that I've gotten into. But then I'll scan them in, and I'll work my way in Photoshop. I'll re-line art all the stuff that I then obviously clean up the line art because it looks really bad. Um, and I'll do the coloring, and I'll do all the backgrounds on my own using a couple screenshots to maybe merge a background together. Or, but I like switching them up a lot. For the one more question. Okay. For the pony like line art on Photoshop, like yes. once you've already done that, and you're doing the actual like outline of the you know, ponies. Yes. I've tried that and like for some reason I can't seem to figure out which one's easier. Do you actually use like the brush tool or the pen tool? Oh, I love the pen tool. Pen tool? The, the pen okay. tool is the most awesomest thing And I've you're ever using found. a tablet too, I presume? I, I, I really like using the tablet if I'm using like trying to do like like really small details mm-hmm. like a shade on a bush or something like that. Like they don't have the shading too much on the, on the show on that but that's my own flair. Um, I like using the pen pad tool because I can get the crisp clean line art and I can easily redo all my old, like my messed up sketches and stuff like that. Okay. But uh, uh, the one thing I always recommend is flip your image. Always flip your, because for some reason, a lot of people get in this habit where they, if you draw it out one way, like bam, okay, like this derpy one on my card right there. If I drew that derpy like that, mm-hmm. and I flipped it for some reason, like the sketch was that, and I, when I flipped that sketch, it looked really weird. And it's because I'm working in one direction. So it's that balance that you got to have. If you, so where you flip it one way, it looks the same and balanced if you flip it the other way. So how do you, like, okay, so you said when you flipped it, it looked it, like deflected on one side. Yeah, like, how so do you go about, like, actually fixing that? What I'll do is I will just look at the image and f- just figure out which, it does, like, for example, like, does this leg need to be moved over more or does... Oh, so you're getting two different perspectives on it. Get two it, different basically. perspectives. It, okay. And it helps because that's the thing that Citra taught me and some a really high professional artist told me that flipping your stuff really makes that balance like perfect so where you could i don't know it just looks better i mean if you look at my old stuff it's different well it makes a lot of sense yeah Thank you. <laughs> no no problem but yeah the pen pad tool is like the greatest thing I've it ever is found. i just wanted your opinion on okay. it okay yeah it's Thank all right you. I'm done. all right who else we got <laughs> uh, i saw your hand earlier that's a question hi i'm interested in learning photoshop i'm just not sure what the best way to start so I can produce something that's meaningful? I mean, do you go from a book? Did you self-teach oh, yourself? Oh, I, taught, I you self-taught ask? myself, yeah. Um, it depends what you're looking for. Um, if you're looking for trying to pay for something, like Photoshop CX6, which I did, um, you're looking at about $1,000 <laughs> to get the whole program. Um, if you, I would say you can start out on GIMP, and GIMP is a good way to begin. Same with Photoshop Elements. Um, I've just been very comfortable with Photoshop my entire life. I worked with it in high school because in computer classes, I learned a lot of stuff in that. Um, I'm just very comfortable with it. It's just, if you want to use Photoshop, you can. It's just a little bit pricier. But if you want to start learning something, you could use Illustrator or you could use like Photoshop, Photoshop Illustrator or you could use Photoshop Elements. I would say Photoshop Elements is a really good program. I don't use it, but it's really, really good because I know a lot of people that use it, and it's basically the same thing as Photoshop. 
Now, is Photoshop Elements pretty intuitive for learning? Um, not really. You just gotta learn just a couple things. And I, I don't really use it too much, so I don't really know much about it. All I know is that it's kind of almost exactly like Photoshop CS. Like um, Photoshop CS. Whatever. I think the most intuitive program to learn for digital work is a Paint Tool SAI. Oh, that one. And I it's about that one. I think thirty dollars. Um, so it, that's a really good one as well. I totally like forgot that about that one. That's a, yeah. I would go with that one. Yeah. I know a lot of people who use that. Paint Tool SAI. Yes. Paint Tool SAI. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I totally forgot about that one. <laughs> uh, there's one to say good. And yeah, Neil. Hi. Um, there is an OC creator kit I found on De DeviantArt.com. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I tried using it with Photoshop, but I couldn't figure out how, because it was probably like my second time opening up Photoshop, and I don't really know much about it. Would you? Care to give me any tips? On um, are you just trying to get the actual finished character into Photoshop? Yeah. <sighs> oh boy, I don't really know. How, I, I don't even use that. I'm just trying to figure out. Have you tried like obviously copying it, like right clicking and trying to save the image once it's completed and stuff uh, like that? I'm That's what I would do. Is the better idea would be trying to hit print screen on your on the keyboard and then moving into Photoshop because that will save the entire screen that you have. Yeah, if you can save it as a JPEG or a PNG, you can literally drag and drop it into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, and to print screen something, the best way is to press print screen, then open paint, paste, and then you'll have your screen in paint, and you can do whatever you want with it from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, that's different. I never, that's a good question. <laughs> I, even, I, I didn't even think about if you could do that with the Pony Creator. I know you can actually download it. Yeah, you can probably right click the image when it's done and yeah. save the, the JPEG. I just don't know if you can actually download the actual creator file. Like, I don't know if there's like a thing that has, says, oh, hey, you can download the entire creator and work on it on, not on DMR, but on your own computer. I don't know if you could do it like that. It's above my paycheck. So. <laughs> huh. uh, also, I'm trying to learn how to animate with Flash uh, Micromedia 8. Oh, OK. Would any of you know anything about that? I have no idea no. how to animate. That's, that's one thing I would love to learn how to do. It's, that's a completely separate level that I am not even If you close see somebody doing. running around with a t-shirt that says Sonic Rain Boom on it, pull them over and like, uh, try to steal some of their time, because those are the people that really know what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the guy uh, Snappy. Uh, it's it's uh, S-N-A-P-A-I. He's a good, a good uh, guy for animator that you might want to get in contact with. He knows a lot about Flash animations and stuff like that. He, he was one of the guys that worked on Double Rain Boom animating. Yeah, Double Rain Boom. That's yeah. what I mean. <laughs> Rain was Sonic Rain Boom. I, I thought of Sonic <laughs> Rain Boom. Double Rain Boom. All right, we got, we, oh, there we go. Finally, one of the Rainbow Dashes. Yes. Um, hello. Um, to be an, as an artist, I'm going, to be, I'm going to college to major in art. And I'm not going to like an art school or anything, but do you see art being profitable, making money, and being successful? You, you can answer that one first. I want to let you have one. <laughs> you have a shot. No, you go first. Me? Uh, just, so you basically would just want to think about making a career or something like that? Um, are you just talking about just MOP in general or just art in general? Just art in general. Uh, so you, you want to go to art school and you just want to see if you can make it into like a career that's profitable? Um, I think it's doable. It's just that you have to find, again, you have to find your medium, what you're most comfortable with. and figure out what you feel most comfortable with and then pursue it um, into whatever art school you want to go into. I'm, I, I'm not really too familiar with it. I mean, I'm, again, I'm a self-taught artist. I'm not really like one of these big guys like Andy Price. Uh, I don't really know like, about the basics about how to go about doing that, uh, how he started out. Um, but I guess anybody can make a career. It's just a very, very competitive market if you go into the art field like that. Because um, I knew a lot of people who I graduated with were art majors, and a lot of them don't have jobs right now. They're working in other mediums that they didn't even graduate for, but it's very tricky. But I don't know. I don't know if you guys have any well, other inputs. Um, it is very hard to make a career, a successful career, mm -hmm. out of the um, art industry. The I kind of looked at with the jewelry thing because jewelry has been around since. Forever. Forever, yeah. The, the Egyptians were making jewelry and wearing it. For, I mean, it's been around a long time. But one thing you got to kind of keep into consideration is you got to kind of keep with the times. Um, digital art yep. is, is, more, is, is probably in a higher demand than um, if, you can, if you can 
I don't know. Why. If you can sketch fast, people love that. Yeah. People mm-hmm. love people who can sketch fast. But again, that's it goes back to what you were saying or Trevor was saying. Yeah. You had to be born. Some people were just born with that natural gift that they were just like, I can do this. Bam, here you go. Here's a sketch. Two seconds. There you go. Um, I I feel like what we're doing as an art, well, with the exception of uh, the guy actually has the job making things like yeah. engagement rings. Um, but like me and Toxic, a lot of what we're doing is uh, on the side for fun um, mm-hmm. or for the specific niche in this fandom. Yeah. And I mean, that's not something you can really build a career out of. Uh, when you go to school and you major in your art, your teachers are going to teach you your mediums and you're going to teach you your trade. They're going to give you the skills that you need to then thrust yourself into, um, into a career. And I feel like going to school is going to prepare you as far as giving you those tools. Now, you need to learn how to be good with those tools. Give yourself the time and the experience and the practice so that you can sell yourself to whoever you want to work for and what you want to work for. And I feel like if you have the drive and you have a goal set in mind and you work towards that goal, not just going through school like, oh, I need to make my grades and whatever. You need to go through school thinking of what you want at the end of school and you need to if you're talking with your teachers, you're talking with your advisors, and you're talking with um, the people that help thrust you from school and into the career that you ultimately want, um, I feel like you can be very successful in art. Um, and art is a great, great thing to go in with a major. There's so many different things you can do. So uh, I feel like if you think about it backwards, think about where you want to be in 10 years and do everything in your power to work towards that as a goal. And you should be able to do it. But it's, like we said, it's finding your right medium and what you feel most comfortable and what you feel the most fun that you want to do. Right, um, yeah. It's just very, and like I said, it's, it's very, very competitive. That's something, yeah. that if you go into it, it's extremely competitive. It's like with me in meteorology. I can't get a job in that. I, I literally cannot get a job in meteorology right now. I, even though I have all these skills and stuff for it, which I, and I majored in it, it's, I haven't lucked out in it. But you know what? It, you just have to be very persistent. You got, get contacts. That's the one thing. Learn, go on TV art, find some really big, like professional artists. And if you don't, like, I'm just self-taught. I'm gone. I didn't, never went to art school, so I'm trying to rely on professional people who have been in this industry for like years and years and years to help maybe guide me. Maybe it's not a career that I can get into. Maybe who knows? I don't know. That's why I'm asking a lot of people, the bigger people who are yeah. who know what this. I don't know. And they went to art school and stuff. Yeah. And another thing to keep in mind is, you know. Having an art career that um, you know that that you can you can do it for a living, you can make some money, you know that's great and all. But first and foremost, make sure you're having fun with it. I mean, if you're not having fun doing what you're doing, is it really worth doing? You're in the wrong field. Yeah. That's that's basically the thing. It's just very I don't know. It's just you just have to have fun. I mean, I still have fun with it. It's just for someone like me and Trudy, and I guess like what we're in, we're in the MOP thing now. Who's to say, like, in five years, I can move to a completely different show, obviously. It's just, I'm more than the fad stuff, in a sense, it feels like. Hey, if you enjoy your work, then you'll never work a day in your life. Exactly. Yeah. All right, who we got next? Oh, wow. Yeah. What happened when I was turned around? Did you say yes to you? What was that? Did you say yes to you? You know, I have a question for you that I think everybody might know is how you... What kind of tools do you need for your paintings, and what kind of tools do you use for when making your jewelry? That's what I would say. Me? Yeah, both of you guys. What tools do you guys use when you're making your paintings, and what tools do you use for making your jewelry? I already went through mine. What do you guys use for yours? Um, an assortment of files, a, uh, <laughs> uh, a butane torch, soldering torch. Um, are we making a shopping list, Mario? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a jewelry store. I mean, uh, I, I, a you have a lot of stuff um, that you got to use to make the jewelry with. Uh, Band aids, they're handy. <laughs> yep. And soap. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Uh, a lot of very expensive equipment that I have to borrow from my father because I don't have um, I don't have one hundred and fifty thousand. Well, what's the, what's the hardest? My own. Well, here's the thing. What's the hardest tool that you have to use? Like, what's the most pain in the neck tool that you have to use for whatever, like you washes or something The hardest one like would be the, uh, the diamond grinder. That'd be the hardest. Diamond grinder? I have yeah. a diamond grinder? Yeah, oh, I get it. Do you? I don't cut gemstones. Do you work with, you don't cut with gemstones, so you don't. Okay. Yeah, I, was cutting, cutting a, I was trying to make a, a pun there. It's hard. Oh. Yeah, uh, uh, work with me. Oh <laughs> um, sometimes having the right tool for the jobs is really nice. Um, when I first started out, the first few paintings that I made, I uh, hand uh, beveled the edges for the canvases I stretched. And uh, to do that, I used a large knife. 
Um, that's fun and all, but it takes a long time. It's also hazardous for your fingers. So like getting a table saw um, made everything a lot faster and now I can like make things down to one sixteenth of an inch in precision and it looks a lot nicer. Stuff like that. Just yeah, yeah, stretch your own canvases and stuff like that. Yeah, stretching, I, uh, making, if you can avoid buying anything labeled for art, like as soon as they, it's like labeled for artistic purposes, they slap on an extra 50 bucks. Um, so like I buy uh, furniture uh, materials when I buy my canvas and wood. Um, and so because it doesn't have the art attached to it, it's much cheaper. Well, if you had to recommend buying a canvas, where would you recommend buying Amazon. canvases from oh okay canvas art okay there you go the, yeah. every, the, you can buy anything on the internet just buy it in bulk so you don't have lots of stuff yeah extra yeah oh well, there you go you oh you already did there okay now and then for me it's like i said for i i just do paper pencil oh well, i don't really use pen but i just pen, just paper pencil and then just i use just work we work everything in photoshop and just God, it's so long. Every comment that I do is like four to five days worth of work, and it's hours and hours that I stream. And actually, the thing is, like, if you want to really pressure yourself and really, I don't know, I feel like, I think like you, you were saying earlier, live streams are good because, like I said, you can't get the strategy, and you have eyes watching you, so you almost have to do it, but it's almost fun because you can entertain people, too, and it keeps you focused on what, you, what you're trying to do. So, I don't know. That's that. Don't look at me. I'm out of questions. I know. Well, you? Really? Right? I don't know. Anybody else got any questions here? Someone's going to have one. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, you don't have to go out there. You could yell it. All right. So, I'm a software engineer, and your artistic types seem like aliens to me. Prove <laughs> that you're human. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Um, sometimes I really enjoy talking to my friend who knows how to program things because then I can get him to make things for me that make my website function. But he keeps telling me that he needs lots of pictures. So um, if he needs JPEG files or whatever of images, textures, or whatever to put into his framework that he creates, um, I help make that. So um, I can actually work with someone that you would think is human. If, if that, if that's at least a degree of separation. That is acceptable. All right. <laughs> you? I don't know. I don't know. Are you? Beam me up now. Beam me up. Get me out of here. <laughs> Get me out of here now. Well, nah, it's, uh, I don't know. I know people. I know humans. I know you. <laughs> there you go. Mario's definitely an alien. Huh? You're an alien. I Just, am an alien. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, am one, I am one wacky person. If anybody knows me, it's awesome. But anybody else got any questions? Yes. Uh, yes, question wise. Uh, you said that you use all sorts of software and tools and stuff. One such, I mean, I guess when it comes to software, I use like my paint, I use uh, draw, I draw it and sketch and then scan it and stuff. Um, I mean, uh, I guess uh, in some people, they recommend. Yeah. Um, are you just trying to gain? Are you talking about just learning how to sketch, or are you just trying to work as far as computer tools? Um, I suppose computer tools. Like, uh, say, you know, you scan the image. Yeah. And then, uh, like, uh, how would you start off with uh, drawing it? Like, how would you start off with uh, making it look professional or, I don't know, something like that? Um, it depends on, uh, well, for me, I don't have a steady enough hand where I could literally go through all my sketches. Even though they're in show style sketches, they're so small that I can't really. I don't, I don't, I can't really go by freehand and outline like an eye in a perfect oval. So what I like to do is I, I take the elliptical tool and I'm, I'm, I'll make the base out of it. I'll make the base eye that should be the right size. And then what I'll do is I'll use that outline that it gives you and I'll use the actual uh, pen and pad tool and I'll go over that circle again up until like wherever I think the, like the eyes, like there's a black line that goes around the eyes like right here. And what I'll do is I'll delete the uh, selected, uh, electrical tool circle that's there and I'll actually go so it's, I just had the path there I'll right click and I'll stroke the path for some reason the actual stroke in the electrical tool and the pen pad tool 
it's a different stroke. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's a little bit thicker if you use the actual electrical tool ones. But it's just more trying to find, just playing around with Photoshop. And I, again, I just know Photoshop. I don't really know Illustrator. I've seen it. I don't really know much about what, what like Photoshop SAI does. I don't know what uh, Photoshop Elements does. I don't really know the differences between the programs, even though I hear they're kind of the same. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just know Photoshop. That's kind of the best advice I can give. It's just, I don't know, you just have to pay money for Photoshop. <laughs> So it's a it's it's a pretty penny, but if you do get it, get it off a of Creative Cloud because the Creative Cloud gives you a ton of every a ton of other programs. It will give you Illustrator, fl uh, Flash, everything that you need, and it's all for fifty bucks a month. But there's one problem: you have to pay fifty dollars for twelve months before you can even cancel it. So you have to be heavily invested if you're going to use Creative Cloud for all the tools that you can get with all the programs. A lot of people have had issues with that because I, I would like to, maybe if I want to cancel it like eight months in and I have like no money, then you can't do that. You have to go the full year before you can cancel your program if you don't want to have all that. And sometimes the best place to start and the most valuable tools that you can work with are a sheet of computer paper and a graphite pencil. They're a lot cheaper. And you can learn most all the skills um, that you need in order to create um, a work of art eventually uh, by using just those things. Yeah, it, yeah. That's basically all I know. That's all I can really speak on. It's just I, again, I just know Photoshop, so I just know the pen and pad tool is like my like godsend tool, and I love using it because I can get everything really crisp and clean. And because again, I can't freehand it like that. I could, but I only do it for like the DBZ auras and that I do, or certain other shading things that I do. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, Hi, mom. I'm on yeah. YouTube. There you go. <laughs> I drank all my water. <laughs> there you go. Dude, I drank two You're cups. Nothing special. I drank all mine. <laughs> uh, huh? Yeah. What? I'm not an artist. I can't draw. I drew a smiley face on his water bottle. He did. See. <laughs> uh, my name is Dude Bro. I am a programming staffer, and I'm seeing a few panels. I'm not that important, but I think I am. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm see, I ask the questions and then run out of the questions. There you go. And then we don't know what to do for three minutes. I have a question. It's like noon time and I'm hungry. Who's buying lunch? 12.30. Do you want, you want to cover that? <laughs> Gotta use that vendor money. Oh. Do we, have the, do we have the Unicon bits? I'd like to have those. Oh my Can God. we use those? Can we not talk about Unicon? I know, we could use those. Ugh. We could, we, could, we could do those. I'll get so mad. <laughs> Actually, speaking of other cons, uh, what other cons are in you guys' lineup for the next about year or so? Oof. Um, I might do Nightmare Nights. I'm not 100% certain, though. This is probably my last convention for the year, at least seven months. I'm going to be living in a tent in the woods for the next half year, at least. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Yeah, he's not kidding. He's actually going to do it. It's going to be awesome, but it's going to really put a damper on conventions. And I am, this is my last MLP con until TrotCon next year. I'm moving to a completely different convention scene because it's, it's too crowded right now in the MLP conventions. Uh, but that's a different topic altogether. Um, but I'm going to move towards the anime general cons. I got YomaCon as my next one, and I'm going to do MAGFest if I can. So that's the ones I'm going to try and hit up next, at least in the next year or so. But Yomacon, I'm already signed up and ready to go for that in October. Come to that one. Well, it's pretty much basically we're in through all the questions. I know we already talked about it again, but just to really drive it home, what booths are you going to be at in the vendor hall? 502. 604. 420, buy all my stuff. Go buy their stuff. You live like two tables, don't you? Visit all of them because there's some really awesome people down there. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think there's no more plushies. You anymore. should go visit my friend Belfry, who is handing out flyers for Drawn Con, which is best con. Better than this con. And we're going to be one of the few people that still have stock because we can't sell anything while we're here. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that or we're going to be... <laughs> we're going to be one heck of a chaotic scene when we go down there. No pun intended, but there you go. It's going to be very interesting. I don't know. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Well, that pretty much wraps up the full hour. We just have 30 seconds left. You guys want to count down? No. 
30. I, I don't know. 29. Sure. 28. Can, I can toss her. Wow. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, now we're just going to sit here quietly. Um, oh, come on. Yeah. We don't need to like, wait until it's... We're we'll out to wait. It's fine. Oh, we wait. Huh? We sign wait. It. Oh, yeah, we can sign it. Yeah. That, Ooh, uh, autographs. Oh, man. Autographs for everybody. Uh, yeah, we're going to do it here. You have seven seconds to finish that. Oh, man. Five, four. I, did it. I finished it. You did it. Now, now it's his turn. Oh. I did it. All right. I got underneath the timer. We did it. That means I can leave now Woo! and get lunch. Yeah. I'm not going to get lunch. I'm going to stay in the vendor hall. <laughs> I will not bring you lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ooh, platinum sponsor. All right. Thank you guys very much for coming to Process and Procedure. It has been fun.